Hi everyone, my name is Costa and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a tutorial video. Last week I released a recording of Celtic Hymn, which is an original composition by Brian Thomas. I'm going to leave all the links down below so you can reference it. Um, several of you commented that you were intrigued by the ornaments that I was using and somebody requested that I do a little tutorial video explaining how I do these ornaments. Um, and I thought, yes I would, why not? I haven't got anything better to do, would I? There you go. So before watching today's video, I would recommend go down below and watch my original recording because this video is a tutorial about the way I play that recording. Further, you should go to the um, YouTube page of Ryan Thomas, who's the composer of this melody. And from the description of his video, you can actually download the sheet music for this piece. So you can follow along. Maybe it helps you, maybe it doesn't, right? If, if you can read sheet music and if this kind of thing helps you, go download it. It'll, it'll help you in, in the little tutorial that I'm about to do. If you like these sorts of videos and if you find them helpful, uh, you know, maybe you're an accordion player, I suspect you are, uh, you noise maker, maybe you're an accordion player and you find these kinds of videos helpful or you're a, you know, some other kind of musician and you're just interested in these things or you're my mother and you have nothing better to do, uh, then I would very much appreciate it if you made a donation through PayPal. Or if you'd like to become a monthly supporter, you can do that through Patreon by following the links in the description down below. Again, um, a lot of effort and time goes into making these videos and I really enjoy it. So if they help you, if you want to see more, let me know in the comments what kind of you know tutorials you'd like to see or what kind of music you'd like to hear me play. And if you'd like to support these efforts, go to PayPal or Patreon. Thank you. So let's get right into it. This is a Celtic folk tune. It's not traditional, it's original, but it's in that kind of traditional style. I grew up in Eastern Europe, in Bulgaria, playing Balkan folk music. Balkan folk music and Celtic folk music are very similar to me in the sense that they rely heavily on ornamentation. Whatever the instrument is, whether you're a singer, I mean, all instruments in folk music really imitate the voice. So, whether you play, I don't know, a stringed instrument or, or a woodwind instrument or a keyboard instrument like I do, which is really a woodwind instrument, I suppose, um, <laughs> the, the style of the music depends heavily on the ornaments. The best way to pick up the style and to learn it is to do it by listening to, and by imitation. I learned to play folk music by ear because I couldn't read music, I couldn't read notation. That happened later on. When I, you know, when I got to college and then, you know, you learn your theory and you do your exercises. But before that, I learned to play long before I knew, you know, what a treble clef is or any of that. So my recommendation is if you can read music, download it because it may help you learn a little bit quicker. But the best way to do it is to just learn it by ear. This is how I learned this tune, even though I can read music and I had it. I just did it by ear. Right. So then, here is the way I approach ornamentation in folk music. I mean, in all folk music, Balkan, Celtic, whatever the case is. I kind of approach it the same way. I have the same little theory about how that works and how I make it work. So here it is. There are two types of ornaments you need to know. A trill and a grace note. These are um, terms taken from classical music because I think they're helpful but I'll explain what those are. You have two ornaments you need to know, a trill and a grace note. Here's what a trill is. You have the main note, let's take uh, D over here. You have the main note and you go, you see that? Was that too quick? There you go. It's an alternation between the main note and the upper note. You can do a reverse trill upside down, meaning meaning the main note, the neighbor below, and back to the main note. You could do that. With both of them, you could use semitones or whole tones. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, a semitone 
is the key right next to the one you're playing, be it white or black. So you just go up here and you see what's next to it. Is it black or is it white? That's a semitone. If you're in this key, the semitone is white and here is black. <clears throat> so you could do a trill using a white key or a black key. Doesn't really matter. Well, it does, but it depends on the context. So here's a trill, trill with a semitone. Here's a trill with a whole tone. Both are fine, both have their place. Here's a, a mordant, a reverse trill with a semitone. Here's one with a whole tone. Upper. In this, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you um, uh, uh, trills that actually use more than a whole tone, a third. So here's the D. I'm going to use my F. You see, that creates a very nice effect, and you're gonna you're gonna hear it in some. That kind of sound. That's a third, a B and a D. That's how I get that kind of sound. But I'll, I'll show you as we get to the to the music specifically. The other type of ornament you need to know is the grace note. Here's what it is. You have your main note, and you use again grace note from above or from below, and it can be either a semitone or a whole tone. Doesn't matter for this. Here it is. I'm going to use the semitone above now. So look at it this way. I'm going to play four notes, four eighth notes. D. Okay? No grace note, no ornament. Now, in between each of those, so you got your four grace notes, right? In between each of those, I'm now going to cut a little grace note into them. So you get this. So first I'll do uh, no ornament, then I'll put it in. So, grace note. You see, see I'm kind of nodding on the downbeats. The rhythmic structure has to remain the same. This is a very important rule when you're uh, uh, doing ornamentation. Any kind of music, I don't care what it, if it's Baroque or, or any, doesn't matter. The rhythmic framework, the skeleton has to be there because you're ornamenting within it, you see? so. That's an upper grace note from above, right? D, I'm using D sharp, or E flat. Now, I'm gonna do it from below. Same note, D, I'm gonna use the C sharp. You see, the, the accent is still on the D. I'm not, I'm not doing that's, that's making the two notes equal. They're not equal. It's still about the main note. The main note is the most important thing, right? But what you're doing is you're just ornamenting with the top note. So here's how I teach my students. Actually, I just had a student this morning and I was um, showing, him how, showing him how to do this. So maybe it helps you as well. Have a look. So I do. D. Now take your finger. All you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it. See what I'm doing? From the D sharp or E flat, I'm just sliding it down to the D. So let me do the exercise now with the with the grace notes. Do you hear the difference? Same four notes and the accent, uh, kind of the metrical accent, is still on the D. That doesn't change. But now you're just cutting in these little notes. Now the challenge is to take, uh, take that kind of effect, but do it with two fingers instead of one. Because you're very limited if you just do, if you just do that, right? So take two fingers and like that. So that's a grace note from above and from below. And I previously showed you all the trills. These are the two types of ornaments that you need to know about. In this piece, and sort of in Celtic music in general, you mostly need to be concerned about um, grace notes. Not so much about trills, but grace notes. Those are the, the, the kind of the most characteristic and the most important ornaments. So now we've looked at the two main types of ornaments that you really need to know about. Trill, grace note. Both of them can be upper or lower. 
and we're going to find both in the piece that we're going to do. So now let's have a look at the piece. What I've done with the piece is I've separated it into phrases or think of it as kind of musical sentences. That's the way I'd like you to try to learn it because I think it'll be easier for you that way. It'll be easiest. I mean, that's how I learned it. Don't just try to eat the whole thing, right? You kind of separate it into little pieces, then you eat them one by one, then it's much easier. So here's the way we're gonna do it. I'm gonna play you each phrase first with the complete ornaments, the way I do it in my original video. Then I'm gonna play a bare bones kind of skeleton version of that. Then I'll show you how I get from one to the other. So here we go. Here's phrase one. The opening. Just that. Let's just do just that. That's phrase one. Um, here it is without the ornaments. So you maybe see better this way. So first I did with ornaments, now this is without. Here's how I add them. So the top B, I add a grace note from underneath. Instead of this, it becomes, you see? Now, there's a little trill on the B as well, have a listen. You see? Here it is, using uh, uh, the C natural. Next. That's the next little phrase. I do. Uh, what do I do? There it is. You see? Basically, I'm putting grace notes to avoid repeating notes because that gets a little dull. Not very interesting. So I do. So what is that? It's two A notes. What do I do? The first one gets a grace note from under, lower grace note. The second one gets a upper grace note. So, becomes, you see? So, but instead of going, I go. So here it is, the whole thing now. Phrase two goes like this. Okay, so that's the version with ornaments. Here it is without ornaments. Okay, so um, here's the way I put the, it, again, it's just grace notes here. Sorry, I like this two trills. Instead of going, I go. So what am I doing? That E, um, I'm adding a lower grace note first, then I'm adding a trill. Sorry, no, it's actually two grace notes, one from underneath. using the G for the grace note, not the F sharp. What is that? That is, that's the skeleton and then we add lower grace note, upper, lower. So, becomes 
So the whole thing, this is phrase two now. Uh, Here's phrase three now. It, it's very similar to phrase one, but it has, instead of it, instead of it being that, it's, it's, it's that. So what do I do on the G? I do this. Okay, so it's a lower grace note, but it's an E. It's a minor third. I said it's, yes, a minor second or a, or a major second, but in this case, it's a third. It works. Um, so here it is, it's the G, and I go. What is that G? Upper grace note, lower grace note. So here it is. Instead of, I'm gonna go. Okay, and then a trill. That's the whole thing. Same as phrase one. Grace note on the E, lower grace note. Okay, so here is phrase four, the last phrase of the A section, with ornaments. Uh, without, uh, without ornaments. What do I do? The E gets a lower grace note and an upper grace note. The upper is the G. Okay, the next part is A, G, E. There, I put a grace note on the A, but I do it with my pinky. <laughs> um, if it's too weird for you to do, I don't you know, it depends on your technique. If you have a very good working pinky, <laughs> uh, functional, then, then do it. Just a grace note with the pinky. And then, but I do. Like that. Here's the first phrase of the B section, what I call the B section, with ornaments. Here it is without ornaments. Sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? I mean, it's pretty because it's played on the accordion and it's beautiful, <clears throat> but it needs those ornaments, right? It's, it's the style. So here's what I do. Again, just grace notes, promise. Instead of it being, it becomes. Next is. And I do this. So two Bs, uh, two Bs, two As and a G. The first B gets a lower grace note. The second B gets an upper, done with a third. The two A's, the first one doesn't get anything. The second one gets a grace note with a B flat. And the way I do it is A, and the finger number four plays the grace note. So then I switch to three, you see, so. And then the E, I put a lower grace. So here's the whole thing. Whoops. There it is. Phrase number two of the B section.
without ornaments. That one actually sounds okay without ornaments, but no, put them in. Becomes. The first one gets a grace note. That's it. You could slide it if you learn how to do that. What is this? Again, two E's at the top. First one gets a lower, second one gets an upper. Whole thing. Next part. Just a grace note. So the whole thing. This is phrase three of the B section now. I'm gonna link it to phrase uh, two, just for continuity. Here it is. That's rather pretty then. So we ended up here on the high E. Here's the next part. No ornament there. This is without ornaments. Uh, e, E, D. E, E, D, E, B, A, G. With ornaments it becomes Two Ds, first one gets lower, second one gets an upper. That's it. And this B gets a lower. Grace note. That's it. And the last little bit, we're almost done, I promise, is this. Well, that's the ending of the A section. Same thing. So, copy the ornaments. If you're too lazy to rewind, I'll show you how it goes. Okay, ornaments. The, the, the E gets lower and upper. The upper is a third. It's a formula. It's starting to sound very repetitive. It's the same thing. This is the pinky one. becomes right okay so there we go so that's the whole piece well not really not really the whole piece it's about half of it so if you listen to my original version which I hope you have otherwise very little of the last however many minutes <laughs> is going to make any sense uh, so if you've listened to it you're going to notice that there is a fair bit more of the piece in the recording. Well, what happens is that we were just playing in the key of G. At the point where we just finished the tutorial, uh, I mean with the phrasing, the composition then modulates to D major and you get the basically the exact same music but in D major. So I haven't recorded uh, um, a tutorial on those phrases because the ornaments are actually uh, basically identical to what I do in the first section, the one in G major. If you'd like me to do a, a tutorial on the D major phrasing, let me know and, and I can do that. But it's basically the same ornaments. Get the G major phrasing and ornamentation under your fingers, really get it under your fingers, and then try the D major on your own, okay? Try to kind of listen to it and kind of also sing it. I'm not a very good singer, but it doesn't matter. That's why I play instruments, because I suck at singing. So sing it to yourself and try to imitate in the second section in D major whatever you just learned about the first section in G major. Thanks so much for watching. I know this was a bit of a lengthy video, but I wanted to kind of go in depth on the ornaments. It's uh, 
it's not a complicated topic, but it's it's kind of arcane, I guess, because it um, it has to be broken down properly, because it can be very complex, particularly when you listen to you know like an authentic folk player of of this tradition of the Celtic tradition on fiddle or whistle or anything or a singer especially, then you're gonna hear these 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 incredibly complex ornaments and you're trying to figure out like how do I do this stuff with my my accordion man or the guitar or something else. Uh, it can be challenging, so I hope this video kind of helped you in figuring out some of these little little tricks. If you enjoyed this video, this tutorial, and would like to see more, or perhaps sort of different genre videos, or if you want to hear me play something, let me know in the comments below. I would very much appreciate your financial support through a one-time donation on PayPal, or through becoming a monthly subscriber on patreon.com. All links are down below. Even as little as $5 a month really, really helps. Thanks for watching and congrats, you made it until the end of the video. <laughs> See you next time.